All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Uh, joining you from a little bit of a cloudy San Diego today. Uh, and today I'm joined by Lynn Heidi, who is up in upstate New York. How are you doing, Lynn? Hello, I am doing fabulous. And Lynn is the founder of upyoursales.com, uh, creating profitable telesales people and organization. And as we were just discussing before coming on air, well, pretty much everybody's an inside salesperson right now. So this is very, very timely. And we're going to talk about how listening is the key to building trust. So, um, you know, Lynn, when people think about, uh, you know, telesales and inside sales, I mean, they think about people talking like calling up and talking as opposed to listening. So, um, so because most people feel the pressure, like when they call somebody or they do a virtual meeting that they have to, they, they have to keep talking and you know, get this, get this up and running. I know. And, and it scares me sometimes because when I'm working with people, one of the first things I say is the sooner you can ask a question mm -hmm. and stop talking the better your meeting is going to go. I don't care whether it's a Zoom meeting like we're doing today yeah. or if it is in person or on the phone. Truly, you have to stop talking for your prospect or your customer to share anything. And then you have to pay attention and not be listening for what you want to hear, mm -hmm. but actually be listening to what is going on. Yeah, so I mean, part of that is, I mean, I think is... Um, uh, a lot of a lot of salespeople don't actually uh, put questions together before the call, you know, to, because sometimes let's face it. I mean, you can't always come up with questions off the top of your head. So call planning is an essential part of this uh, routine. Am I allowed to give you two thumbs up? Yes, you are. Exactly. I think the other thing. And someday I'll actually like write the quote down and memorize it, but <laughs> the act of planning is almost more important than having a plan because salespeople are always saying to me, but I never know what's going to happen. I don't know what mm -hmm. they're going to say. But the activity of planning it out for yourself helps you have a framework that the conversation happens in. And I have question strengths for myself. So questions okay. with blanks or dot, dot, dot at the end so that regardless of what they say to me, I have something prepared that I know is going to be open-ended. I know that it's going to sound more insightful and we can have a better dialogue, a better conversation. Yeah. And I just think it's, it's as you said, I mean, I think it's a good discipline anyway, the planning part, because uh, it does get, it force you to think about it. it. It can trigger stuff later on. You can think, Oh yeah, you know, when I was doing the planning, I remember that. So, and I have a question around that. But it, it just it just stops you going in, you know, flying blind, uh, which is always flying blind is never a good thing. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but here's but the, the point that you're uh, you're making about listening, particularly if you're on the phone or in a virtual meeting, I think people get, you know, salespeople particularly get very frightened of silence. Oh yeah, and it's funny because when I am coaching and working with inside sales teams, I always say that we have this huge advantage which now I have to share with everybody, but I will, <laughs> which is the mute button. Mm -hmm. And I truly, when I am making sales calls, I will ask a question and put myself on mute. Ah. And the reason is because what I found is that just the activity of having to unmute myself, reach down and either move my key, mm -hmm. you know, my, my mouse over to the right place or click it on the telephone itself, most of the time, someone tells me something that I would never have learned otherwise. And yes. it's because when I talk again, the, the conversation pivots to another direction, right? And their train of thought, it's like when someone tells a really good joke and you wish you had a comeback. <laughs> yeah. And two days later, you think of the comeback, well, you don't call them back up. And that's right. what happens for the prospect, right? That they're thinking of something the conversation shifts and you never learn that piece of information. 
No, that's a that's a really good tip because I mean there is that uh, there is that tendency to as you say your mind is to wander and you're starting thinking about what you're going to say and that you're not really paying attention. But what are why do people struggle so much with listening? I mean, it just seems to be that age old thing. It makes sense. It's intuitively people understand it or whatever, but they find it really hard to put it into practice. And I will give you two answers to that question. The first is for the last 24 years, I have been asking this question of salespeople who I train, which is mm -hmm. how many of you have taken a listening class, a class specifically about becoming a better listener? And to date, I am up to 12 total salespeople wow. in 24 years, <laughs> two of whom were music majors in college. I count them anyway, right. but that was a whole different listening. Yeah. So most of us only have this like anecdotal information that we've absorbed over the years. We haven't actually gone and decided or figured out what kind of listener we are, mm -hmm. not only on a valuation perspective, but what are the things that make it harder for you to listen? What are the things that make it easier for you to listen? Okay. So I'll give an example. Every single pop-up alert on my computer is turned off right because that little outlook ghosting telling me i have an email or even the counter down like mm -hmm. that you can see all of that's off because i know myself well enough to know that distracts me i'm like oh what's that shiny mm -hmm. thing that just came in and I think that's and I think that's a critical point here because because uh, people say today you know we're the busiest as we've ever been and I always push back and say no I think we're the most distracted we've ever been and the two are not the same uh, and and I think to your point is we have devised and designed these devices and everything is everything is competing for our attention and we have the attention span of gnats anyway so we're allowing ourselves to be constantly like going from one thing to another and you can't actively listen if you're if you're that easily distracted and the other piece of that too is truly you said it right practicing listening mm -hmm. is hard work okay no we aren't going to dig a ditch right right but mentally, you have to be present. Yes. And that takes effort. And, you know, no different than going to the gym. You know, you don't walk into the gym and bench press 400 pounds. <laughs> That's true. You go into the gym and you start small. So start trying to listen for smaller pieces of time, right? Mm -hmm. And now that we're on the phone, I think it's even easier to practice that, right? So my joke is that seven minutes is a great phone conversation from a sales perspective some people can't even listen for seven minutes without getting distracted so yeah it's seven seconds i think some people but, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, but it is because it becomes because uh, like i said and, and also we're kind of hardwired to start you know we're already thinking of the reply before you've even got the first couple of words of your sentence out, I'm already on to, oh, well, I wonder what I'm going to say to that. And so actually focusing and listening to, that's why I think the clarifying questions are so important and you need to be, you know, the people need to use them more. So rather than you say something and I just make a note of it, I go, I go and clarify it. Even if I understood it, it's still good for me to clarify it because it reinforces it. It reinforces it for both of us. Yes, exactly. And, and sometimes what ends up happening is not only is it reinforcing it, but they say, oh, I actually meant this, or you mm -hmm. probably need to know that. And all of a sudden, whatever the salesperson, me, you, whoever, yeah. has thought of in their head has to change because that next bit of information could completely change what we would think or say about what's going on in their world and i even sometimes think that we miss out on listening when there is no conversation mm. and if you get someone's voicemail which i suspect people are getting mm -hmm. voicemail more than they're getting people what does that outbound message sound like Right. And have you ever listened to it yourself? Yeah. And I will tell you that I actually try to 
modify my voicemail messages just a little bit based on the personality or the tone of the outbound message from my prospects mm. and my customers. Right. And it's interesting then, I wonder how often, and it may be a good exercise for some people, is to just leave themselves voicemails and listen to them back and sort of go, oh, would I reply to that? Would I call that person back? <laughs> yep. And, and it's interesting when I do voicemail reviews for people mm -hmm. and right. So they'll leave it for me and I always take the recording and I send the recording back and I give them my feedback. Some people I don't think have ever listened to their own until I send them the wave file. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying is it, it, it could be so illuminating for people because you don't realize what you sound like. And if you just did that, and as I said, if you said to yourself, would I call myself back? Yep. And I, I always say, if I am bored, I am boring and I am deleted. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's it because I, I think most people go, oh, I got in voicemail and then they just go into their spiel as opposed to, okay, I've got voicemail. It's an opportunity for me to put my best foot forward. And I will share with you that I look at it that even if it's your 42nd voicemail of the mm -hmm. day, it's the first one to that person. Right. It's their first one from you. And it's, you know. Yeah, because that's interesting because you can pretty much tell if you're the 42nd voicemail of the day when the receiver can pretty much tell that. Yep. Because it sounds like this. Oh, I really wish you didn't get my voicemail. I wanted to talk to a person. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Which is not engaging. <laughs> Which is not engaging <laughs> at all. Or it's just like, oh, thank goodness, this is the 42nd call I have to make. I've that checked that. I've done my 42 calls for the day. I'm good. I'm out of here. Yep. <laughs> so what are some other ways that people can become uh, better at at listening and as you said there are different types of there are different types of listening and and also by giving the space so if i ask you a question and you you stop and you think about it for a moment as i said like people get very antsy and want to jump in and fill the silence rather than i just ask you a question why am i expecting you to answer immediately and i'm going to actually break that out even more mm -hmm. which is I want people to think about who is their target audience. Like who are the human beings that they're calling? Because if we look at that introvert extrovert scale, most salespeople are at least on the extrovert half of that graph. Mm -hmm. Are your clients, are your prospects on the introverted side? Because those are people who need time to think a lot more than an extrovert does. And it really is doing them a disservice. I mean, it's not just that they don't want, you know, they want to give you the right answer, but they have to consider what that is. And they do not mm -hmm. think out loud. They don't. Yeah. And, and I think that's another critical point is, again, is about how people like to receive information and what kind of person they are. So, I mean, if you get a highly relational person, then there's, you know, there's the small talk bit that needs to be done. You get a highly analytical person there, maybe they want to get past that and get into it. As you say, if you get... If you get a, somebody who's a thinker, maybe who's on the on the introverted side, you've got to give them the space and time to process. But yeah, so you can't have a one size fits all. So you have to gauge this pretty quickly who you're talking to. And I, and I do think that we as salespeople have an idea ahead of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, just based on the proclivity of people who have a job that you are selling to, right? right. So if you are selling into a C-suite, are you selling to the chief sales officer or are you selling to the chief information officer? Mm -hmm. Those people are different, you know, holistically. There's mm -hmm. always going to be people that break the mold, right? You and I know them. Oh, I know these people and they're very mm -hmm. social or, and they're in IT or, oh, I know this really introverted person who's in sales. All of that exists. But if we kind of know that generic version, then when we're paying attention, we can quickly determine whether or not they fit into the mold or not and adjust our behavior accordingly. Yeah. And then of course you have the other complication then if you're doing calls where there's multiple 
people on the line. And then you have to try and make sure that you engage with them all. And you also kind of like, you also still have to modify your engagement based on which person you're addressing. And I also think that it's our responsibility, right? So communication is our responsibility as mm -hmm. the salesperson. So if you know there is someone who's a thinker in a call with three or four people, and you've got, you know information is just coming at them, at some point in that call, you need to say, hey, John, you haven't said anything in a little while, and I know you're probably thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you willing to share yet? Right. And, right, and engage different people differently. Or, hey, John, I know you already have an idea before I even ask this question, but let's get Joe's take on this mm -hmm. and then I'll come back to you, right? Start to orchestrate the conversation based on what you know about people. Yeah, and that kind of uh, that kind of call management is is really critical because otherwise you could, yeah, you could fulfill the needs of one person on the call, but you could miss the needs of the other people. And perhaps the other people were actually more important than the person you fulfilled the needs for in the first place. <laughs> or they don't like that person's answer, but are not going to yeah. publicly stand up and say, that's dumb, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And in some ways, that's why I think this whole, um, you know, virtual now is, I think, a little more of an equalizer because I think people are a little bit more, even the, the introvert or the more um, retiring person is a little more confident to speak up in a virtual environment that maybe if they're all sitting around the table and the, the loudest, most gregarious person is like, you know, controlling the room. Yes. I also have found personally that in a setting like this, I will see those people also chat to me mm -hmm. or chat to everyone rather than speak up. So that's another tool that we as the salesperson should engage with people. Hey, if you can't get a word in edgewise, we all know Tom's a big talker. Feel free to put something in chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why it's also key. Sometimes I think it is to make sure that uh, you're capturing all of that, right? You know, as you're asking your questions, you're taking your notes, maybe you have a second person on with you, but, uh, but so that you're not losing control of things because otherwise then you're not listening, right? Because again, right. You're, you're in management mode, you're, you're just thinking, okay, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. And now you haven't heard a word they've said. <laughs> I was actually doing a webinar with someone and I was managing the chat Mm -hmm. While we were, and they asked me a question and I'm like, okay, I'm calling myself out. I absolutely have, please give me 30 seconds. I was, I was managing the chat function, right? <laughs> and, and that's another thing that we should talk about. You cannot multitask. So no. David Crenshaw wrote the book back in 2005, 2006, the myth of multitasking. The human brain can't do it. So mm -hmm. Right? So you cannot be reading email and listening. You can't no. be managing chat and listening. <laughs> yeah, well, as I always say, uh, I always call multitasking is doing lots of things badly. Yeah. <laughs> well, but you're correct. But you're correct. You can't. If you try to manage all of those things, then you're, you're missing out. And you're missing out on the nuances. And I think that's what people... Um, misunderstand sometimes I think if they're on the phone or if they're on a virtual meeting they 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 think okay well there's no nuances like there is in a face-to-face -face here but there are there are plenty of nuances you just need to be very alert to them and I will share that I'm listening for eye rolling I mean if anyone's mm -hmm. ever talked <clears throat> uh, to a teenager on the telephone you can hear someone roll their eyes sure you just yeah. can't I also would suggest that people use physicality just like they would in a meeting, mm -hmm. right? I use air quotes when I'm talking to people on the phone all the time right. because what it sounds like changes. Yes, yes. And, and, if, and, and if you need to be high, yeah, and if you need to be high energy, stand up. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Because if you find yourself that you change and you slouch back in your chair and you whatever, then maybe you need to stand up and, you know, get a bit of energy going. And it's interesting because that is true. That is pure physicality, mm -hmm. right? How oxygen goes through your lungs and comes out your vocal cords changes how we sound. Yeah. And we, we need to pay attention to that ourselves, not only from our speaking perspective, but what does it sound like? I mean, you could hear yeah. when someone else is distracted. Oh, 100%. And you can also feel when 
as I said, when somebody is, is maybe is not that confident doing the call, maybe doesn't want to do it, maybe is, yeah, all of those things, they come across. And in some ways, they're, they're more obvious in, in, in a, in a, on a phone or virtually than people think. Again, if you're listening. If you're listening, yes. If you're not, then it's not obvious <laughs> at all. But then that would be the same if they were standing right in front of you. Um, perfect. So any last tips, uh, Lynn, that you want to share with people on, on listening? I think that the biggest thing is first look at yourself mm -hmm. and take away every distraction you possibly can because of what you know about you. And then right. practice, just like everything else. It is a skill. And if you think you're a good listener, I promise you, you could be better. Right. If you hone in onto the things that you could do well. Yeah, no, this is great advice. I love that idea, though, about uh, you know, knowing yourself. So it's, part of it is you know, be honest with yourself. You know, as you said, you know what you're like. You know that if you have your ESPN ticker up there and something pops up your because of your love sport, you know you're going to go to that. So guess what? Don't have an ESPN ticker going. Right. Whatever. Yeah. No, that's I great, know, great advice. I know I cannot listen to my favorite band because no. I'm listening to the lyrics, not the person <laughs> on the phone. Yeah, I know. I'm the same. I mean, I love music, but I can't listen to music and work at the same time because I would just... I'd be listening to music and sort of working at the same time. Yep. <laughs> but we just, again, know what it is. Know the yeah. thing. Fantastic. Well, listen, uh, Lynn, this has been great. Uh, Lynn Heidi, all of Lynn's information would be in the contributor bio below this video. Uh, but before we go, please do share with people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. So I work exclusively with inside salespeople and teams because that's my entire sales career has been inside. I don't know how outside salespeople do it. I'm impressed by you. But if you are looking for being better at selling virtually, I am here for you, whether it is coaching, training, writing scripts, I do that too. I call them templates though, because everyone should modify anything their company mm -hmm. gives them to the language that they use. Yeah, this is great. And uh, as we were just saying beforehand, I mean, obviously, pretty much everybody's an inside salesperson right now. So, uh, so definitely, you know, check out, check out Lynn, upyourtelesales.com and all of the information, as I said, will be below. Listen, this has been great, Lynn. Thank you very much. John, I had a great time. Yeah, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.